Let's make headwear for a porcelain doll. I teach old-fashioned sewing skills and about once a month we work on doll clothes so this is our lovely reproduction as of yet still unnamed doll and we made her a silk dress last time and we're gonna make her some headwear so I'm thinking a bonnet and also a hood for winter so I have here what I'm thinking buckram for the bonnet we are somewhat working off of the home book of instruction of instruction and pleasure which is 1867 and it does show bonnet shapes. It's a very old fashioned bonnet uh, for the doll, but for dolls, sometimes they followed fashion and sometimes, especially when you're making things at home, they were just very simplified. And so this is one of those very simplified garments by a buckram. I'm thinking arsenic green is appropriate, um, silk for the cover of that. I think it looks matching with this purple dress. And then I'm gonna line it in a cream. And then for the hood, Oh, I thought this was my green. It's gray. And it'll still work. Actually, this might be my ice blue. Cool. And then I have a blue and green stripe for the lining, which I think will be really pretty. So, um, I also have various trims back here that we can figure out what we're going to do, but let's go ahead and get working on pattern. We're going to start first, I think, with the bonnet. So, let me measure back of her head. This is mostly going to be guesstimation, but from here to here it's about, not quite three, it's two and three quarters inches. And the back crown needs to be about two and a half, mm -hmm. yeah two and a half. It's so one and a quarter being halfway. Okay. Okay, so there's that bit. Go ahead and cut this out and we'll cut out the other pieces. Or the other one piece, because really this is a two piece bonnet. I'm going to need a bigger piece of buckram though. Here ish. It's about two inches. I've never done this before, so this is going to be a lot of fun. This is me figuring things out as I do things. Alright, buckram. Cooperate. That is six and three quarters. Oh, oh, that works. And it kind of goes, I did say two inches out, so let me go ahead and get this part done. And it does need to widen here. Let's go ahead and cut this part out. So very quickly, I just want to see if this will fit. I put this, oops, this way, and this more or less right there. That is a large bonnet, but yeah, that essentially works. I mean, it'll fit her. Don't know how good it's gonna look, but well, that will work. Okay, that'll work. It's not a pattern piece. I'm going to need this kind of thin silk, so I could probably double it. Now for the hood, I'm gonna iron that in a second, but I'm waiting for my iron to heat up. So for the hood, what I'm gonna do is measure from where I want the hood to end to the very center of her head, which is five and a half inches. So that would be 11, well, five and a half, so we're gonna do this on the fold. If ever what I'm doing doesn't make sense to you, it's probably because it doesn't make sense to me either. It's just me over here trying to figure things out. Most of the time. Sometimes I actually know what I'm doing. So this needs to be five and a half. Let's see what that's. So we'll call that six, bowed as much this way. And it's almost like making a circle skirt in a way. Fold that in half. So essentially I'm going to gather this up, and there's my little hood shape right there. And I could face this instead of actually lining the whole thing, but I think it's going to be easier to line, and I have the fabric to do so, so why not? I could also cut a batting and bat this thing as well, but I don't think I will. And I'll leave that over here. i got to iron this. Perfect. I need to add seam allowance. Let's do a quarter inch. 
I'm going to cut two just because this silk is so thin. I don't need a lining of that one. I do want to face the brim, so I'm going to use this silk to do so. This should be pretty quick and simple. So what I'm going to do first is hmm, use the sewing machine. I'm going to basically bag line this. I've decided to hand stitch it because the period machine is actually out of the room right now. And it was faster just to do a little running stitch than it was for me to bring the machine in. So there's that. I don't even have the modern machine in here right now. Rhett's using that in the living room. We either bring Wilma in or not have a sewing machine. And so I'm going to do it this way. Clip some corners. Turn it right side out. This is one of those that doesn't really translate to women's size stuff, but it's fun for doll stuff. Alright, I'm going to iron that. Trimming. So I just kind of looked back there and I found some velvet trim. This is also uh, fixing up that hole that I left whenever I turned the thing inside out. So there's that. Now on this type of hood, this will fold back. And so you get a little bit of the silk from the outside, which is just a really pretty effect. This has a nice little coppery color in it, so I happen to have the exact color silk ribbon, and we're going to use these for the ties. There's going to be two basic ties, two sets of ties. Set number one goes on the back to kind of gather up all of this in the back, and set number two is actually to tie on to the doll. I do wish this ribbon was a little bit wider. I think a half inch ribbon would look a lot better visually than this. I mean, for back here it's fine, but for the front ties especially, but I don't have anything in that color that's or even a matching color that size ties. I guess we'll just make some little ties. So she needs her ties right here. And just right on the inside of the bonnet, we're gonna stitch that right in and do the same on the other side. And that'll basically be the hood. Doll head wear always scares me. I don't know why. I think especially with the porcelain heads, it's hard to fit things over that this in the same place, um, just on the opposite side. And that is basically our little silk hood, just like that. So now we get to move on to the bonnet. All right, it's been a while since I've worked on buckram. This is not my favorite task, but we get to do it without a uh, wire, so I guess that's good. So buckram has little holes in it, and I just whip these together. I measure them, they should in theory match up perfectly. I do like to double over my thread for this, or use a really thick thread. For last doll, we didn't even make a bonnet frame. All we did was take a straw frame and trim it. Okay, it's starting to take shape a little bit. Sometimes it's all about finding the right angle to work with the buckram. I haven't made a bonnet in a really long time. This is looking a lot like an 1840s cottage bonnet, but so did the illustration, so I think we're good. That's all I'm concerned about. This does it match the original illustration. Because as long as we're doing it within period parameters, very good. Right. Now we're gonna play a fun game called Does It Actually Fit on a Bed? <gasps> it does! Look at that! I'm actually really impressed. I didn't think it would. Right, and we're gonna do both together to give it a little bit more opaqueness. Essentially, what we're. Oops. Might be helpful to base those together first. So I'm gonna start. I should start from one end to work my way over, but I'm gonna do it from the center and then work my way over with a very loose running back stitch, which could also just be a running stitch. Oh, I'm also gonna need to make a curtain for this. I'm gonna kind of make that super tight. She wants the silk to be really well fitted. Well, the shapes might not be right for 1860s, but I feel like we're getting a decent you know, mini millinery lesson through this. I wonder why they didn't do a fan chon style bonnet because I feel like a fanchon is super simple and it would lay over top of her head really easily and it wouldn't be that much of a bother to make. So I was just wondering why they didn't do that. And sew this together, lining and, uh, not lining, the fashion fabric. And because this doll clothes, I get to use a running stitch. We had to do the direction so we could use a small bow 
um, or tiny little flowers and I don't have any flowers small enough so it looks like we're gonna be stuck with bow. I have lots of colors of silk ribbon, more of that eight inch stuff, but lots of colors of that. I have a teal and a half inch, but this is gonna, not gonna work for that because this color's too close. My philosophy on doll stuff, as long as it looks like a five-year-old could have done it, we're good because this is set technically directions for little girls to make clothes for their doll. So I feel as long as it looks realistic that a little girl could have done it, we've met our goal. Alright, let's see if I can fit this in here. The trick is going to be getting these corners in. That's really the main problem. Alright, camera died for a few minutes and so I did very, very little because I didn't want y'all to miss anything. So all I did was sew in the lining and refit everything. Oh, I also cut a curtain while we were waiting for the camera battery. And technically I sewed it together, but it's just back lined similar to how we did the hood. And I will put it on in just a moment. Now it's making a bonnet for me. I would do a much better job and really be careful. Make sure none of the stitches can be seen, all that. But for a doll, nothing needs to be perfect center here. Just stick the center on the center. Do a couple little pleats. And this is just going to get stitched down. Make sure the pleat stays. And then I got to do the other side the exact same way. It looks so much more like a bonnet when you put a curtain on it. Now the directions also say to put something like a frill on the inside of the bonnet. I just put it on her. Nothing will fit inside. Her hair is too big. So I'm going to have to just leave it. We will do cute little ties, and that's going to be it. We'll probably do something on the outside, though, with bows, like we talked about. And I chose this pretty pink to go um, with the bonnet. And let's see what kind of bow we can do. Maybe just like right here. That way it's, it's slightly decorated. It's not great, but it's, it's there. And on the inside can go her ties. I don't know how well y'all can see that here. This this will work. Just sew that in really tight. And then I'll just sew this on very quickly. Doesn't take much. A stitch or two and that'll keep that in place. I'm gonna see what flowers have. Maybe I have one. I found something that might work. I'm gonna hide it with that a little bit. I'm glad I found this. Then a stitch or two up here just to hold that down over here. Not much, but that'll definitely help with the plainness factor. All right, I think we are done. Let's go ahead and see what the headwear looks like on her. Alright, now comes a portion of the video where I use the mess on my sewing table as a backdrop for the doll. Maybe. Here we go. There. See, that works. Just gonna pull it over so you can see the sides. It could have used to be a little bit longer in the back, like if, if it was a little bit more even, I think that would look better. But that's essentially what it looks like. And of course the beautiful silk on the edge. Bonnet should stay on a little bit better, I think. You can see what I was saying, like there's no space for trimmings, unfortunately. This is for some really long ties. I just need to cut these ties down, likely. Here we go. Look at her little bonnet. With her little flowers. I didn't think we were going to go on her bonnet, but it worked out perfectly. It's a really weird and huge flat shape. Again, bonnets aren't usually shaped like this, but I'm quite pleased with that. That's adorable. Alright. That was a really fast project. I think I did that in less than an hour. Again, doll projects, they just go by so quickly, which I really actually enjoy. This was a little bit more of a let's wing it and find out if I can do it project. Definitely if I were to do this again, I would wire that brim. I don't care what the original directions say. This should not be cutting in like that. If I had wired it, that wouldn't be happening. That may be because I used buckram and not pasteboard, and pasteboard is a little bit more sturdy. So maybe if I used pasteboard, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But 
even then, I had pasteboard slats in my slab bonnet, and I, to curve in, it would cut in a little bit. So, again, I think that's just a wiring issue, and I'd probably, if I were to redo this, I'd probably add some wires. Other than that, she has headwear, so I don't know what we're going to do with her next month. She needs more dresses. I know we have three dresses for her, but I feel like she needs more. She has a coat. She has a fancy apron. I think she needs another dress and another accessory of some kind. I don't know what that's going to be yet. I don't know. What do y'all think? What do you think she needs next? I found some beautiful semi-sheer, um, like, bright pink, like this pink silk. I might have enough to her to do a dress of her. I don't know if I actually will. If not, maybe we can do the silk skirt and I make her a white cotton bodice that's, like, really highly decorated and sheer. Anyway, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think she needs next month. So either a skirt and a bodice that are separate or a silk dress and some sort of accessory. Y'all always have the best ideas, so really looking forward to hearing what y'all think about that. But I think that's about it. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here in the next video.